Welcome back to Wood Sign Wednesday, you guys. It's Sammy with Unicorn Dust Designs. On my channel, I do DIYs and wood signs. Wood signs are every Wednesday, so if that is something that you're into, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit the all little bell up top so you're notified every single time that I post a video. So today, you guys, uh, I am in full swing for everything Christmas and I am so excited for it. So as you probably guessed, we are going to be doing a wood round uh, Christmas. A Christmas wood round is what we're going to be doing today. I am really excited for this one because I've been stocking Pinterest for Christmas wood rounds and I have so many saved because there's so many I want to do. And um, this is probably going to be a reversible sign, but you're not going to see the reversible until next Wednesday. And um, I am also going to be, I guess, um, refurbishing, reusing um, the fall wood round sign that we did. I, you guys, I still didn't like it, even after changing from the cream color to the blue color and I put the apostrophe in the wrong place. I think you guys know I'm pretty famous for that now. Um, so we are going to reuse that and I think it is so important to reuse right now and I wanted to um, let you guys know because I've gotten a bunch of questions. Um, wood is hard to find right now and it is very expensive right now. So a lot of people have been messaging me saying that they can't find the wood rounds and that is going on everywhere, you guys. Um, it's not just you. I cannot find any wood rounds local to me either. Luckily, I have like a stash of three, I think, um, in my basement. So um, I think they are going to be putting them back out. Um, a subscriber actually uh, messaged me and she said her Home Depot came out with them, but they are called like laminate paneled rounds now or something like that. And now they're like almost $7, but I also don't know where she lives. So that, that might change by area, of course. Um, so I think a lot of people are going to turn to making their own wood rounds, uh, going on places like Etsy to buy in bulk. I would also recommend maybe going on wood sign groups because there I've been seeing people post on there that they are making them out of um, birch wood. And then another place that you can go is craftdeals.com. I have never personally ordered from them, but I have seen everywhere on wood sign groups, um, people talking about them and saying that they're great. Now those wood rounds are more like of a plywood, the really thin, thin wood. So just be aware of that. But you know what? It, this is a learning experience. Try out a few of them. See what works for you. Um, see what the prices are, what you would charge, what your customers are liking. So I just wanted you guys to know that information. And that is why I'm going to be reusing this sign because I'm not in love with it. And if I'm going to make something, I really want to be in love with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I want to put it out there for people to buy, if I'm not in love with it, nobody else is going to be in love with it. So um, we are going to be reusing that one. So basically, I am going to take off all of like the felt flowers, re-sand it, stain it. Of course, it was already burned, so we will have that, that you know, look going for it. Um, but yeah, we are going to jump into making a Christmas wood round. And then the following Wednesday, we will put something on the reverse side of our round because you guys, we need to be taking advantage of our wood rounds and getting as much use of, out of them as we can. So with that said, let's get into our Merry Christmas wood round. All right, you guys, as the picture shows, here is our Merry Christmas wood round, which we are going to be making. So we are refurbishing that other fall sign. So we are taking it apart. So you guys, I these, these felt flowers were on there. If they were hot glued to the wood, they were not moving at all. So I grabbed my husband. I was like, please help me. And, um... We had to get like this like scraper tool that had a razor blade on it to get this stuff off. But unfortunately that razor blade gouged my wood, but no fear. All we have to do is get our orbital sander, 
tilt it up. See how I'm tilting it up right there? And just go over it and you could smooth all those gouges out. So I thought I ran out of 80 grit sandpaper. So I switch over to my sander that I usually use on furniture. And let me tell you, I 110% recommend the Orbital Sander over this one. I just feel you have more control over it. Um, it's easier to use. It covers more surface and yeah. So then my husband goes, uh, maybe if you looked, you would see that there was 80 grit sandpaper. And I was like, yeah, whatever, bro. So uh, there it is. So you guys, we need to cover these holes because this is going to be reversible. Um, so I am going to take the star bond gap filler. You guys saw me use this in the other video and we're going to fill those up. Now, yes, it is comparable to a wood filler, but this one is awesome because it dries instantly with this accelerator. So that is why I love it. You don't have to wait. You could carry on with your project and get going and it does not discolor the stain when you put stain over it. It looks like nothing was ever there. So now I'm smoothing everything out with a 220 grit sandpaper so it's nice and buttery smooth. It looks so good. Now we're gonna take our stain, which is isp, which, isp, which I need to Google that. And I'm taking my microfiber towel. You can get these at any hardware store. You could get them at Walmart. And I just cut them into little squares. And then we are gonna do the front, the back, and we are going to do the sides over here. And um, I prefer using the microfiber towels because I feel like they hold a lot of my stain. They distribute the stain evenly. Um, and I just prefer it. I've tried all of the different methods and this is by far my favorite um, way to apply my stain. So then I am going to um, prop this up, let it dry overnight. Now here we are, you guys. So this is 233 plus scotch masking tape it is automotive tape now uh fun fact uh this i started using this because when i first started doing like furniture and wood signs my brother had given me some of his tapes now my brother does custom um like paint and body work for cars and motorcycles I will actually leave his Instagram link down below if you want to check him out. I come from a very creative family. Um, but anyways, he um, gave me this tape and I didn't know what it was, but then I had run out of it, went to the hardware store, got some regular painter's tape and kept on having like these little bleeds. And so I contacted him and he was like, oh no, that's automotive tape, girlfriend. So that is how I got my hands on this and why I started using the automotive tape. It has a better adhesive. I never ever have bleeds with this tape. It is a lot pricier than regular painter's tape, so keep that in mind. Um, and I do have that linked in the description, or sorry, my Amazon store down below. Now, regular painter's tape works perfectly for some people. So you just gotta try some things out and see what works for you. So you guys, we are taping this off. We are gonna create some lines. Now I am going to, now that I've applied that first strip, we are gonna take a smaller strip. We are going to place that underneath this piece of tape. And what this is going to do is give us um, some even spacing, and it's going to help guide us in creating another straight line. Now keep in mind, these are pieces of paneled wood glued together. So the lines are already there for you to start off. Um, just looking at the screen right now, I can distinctly see where some lines are, where the glue, <clears throat> the wood was glued together. So make sure you take advantage of that. Um, I am not taping the sides off on this because remember, this is going to be reversible. So I'm not painting the sides this time. Okay, not like last time. I remembered and I am not painting the sides. And then we are going to go in again and we are going to create a second line. I love having fun with this tape and like doing different, you know, lines and polka dots and stuff. It's always fun when you have a... Um, a customer that's not so cookie cutter in what they want on a wood round. I have so much fun with it. And this one was for my friend. So I kind of like did whatever I wanted. Okay. Now we're going to take that off and then we are going to grab some regular painter's tape and then put that on. And that's more just to 
protect the wood in case I mess up or I go too far up with my paint. And I just kind of layered that on top of the scotch tape. So now we're gonna go in with our paints. This is Crimson Waverly, and I'm using, of course, my foam roller. This is linked in my Amazon store um, in the description box. And just so you guys know, I do, um, these are affiliate Amazon links, so I do get a very tiny commission um, when you purchase from my links, but that is at no additional cost to you. And you know, mama's gotta pay the bills, so uh, yeah, I bought that. So right here, I did not want to do two coats because I loved that wood grain you can see, but it was kind of splotchy, so I had to go in with a second coat. And right there, you guys, I did use my blow dryer on cool setting because I have no patience and I wanted to speed up the process. Um, and I do that pretty darn often because I definitely want to peel the tape up. It's like a kid wanting to unwrap a present. And um, after we do the second coat, again, I take my blow dryer on cool setting and I dry that on up. And remember, I am not doing the sides of this board because it is going to be reversible. Okay, look, I'm going to put this on Zoom for y'all so you can see how pretty. Look at this. Oh my gosh. You guys, if this does not make your heart happy, then you are not into wood signs like I'm into wood sides because this is so awesome it like puts the biggest smile on your face when you like weed something or take off tape and there's no bleeds oh so amazing all right all right maybe we should move on so right here you guys I am going to measure what sign and then I'm going to take you through the design kind of the design process okay all right you guys we're going to do this in real time sorry about the glare it is like super shiny right here Okay, you guys, I just wanted to take you through because I've gotten asked this a lot. Like, how do I do my design in the design space? So this one I am doing on the Cricut Maker. And I like it because it's super easy to, for example, pick, if you come over here, shapes, and then you pick a circle, right? See how that circle goes right there? Now, if you go, let me click this away. Click on your circle, and if your wooden round is 17 inches, then you just change it to 17 inches wide by 17 inches in height, and you got your perfect size. That That's the size of your round. You're good to go. So I made this one 17 and a half inches because that is usually the ones from Home Depot are 17 and a half inches um, in diameter. So I always play around with my design first, okay? So I don't cut anything until I have painted off. If I am doing like these lines or just, you know, like painting half of the sign or whatever, I always wait until I paint and tape off first because sometimes I go in a different direction with it. And, you know, like the placement, obviously like this right here is not gonna be exactly the same. So as you saw before, before I came over here, I measured how far from my last paint stripe down and across. So um, that when I click on this right here, okay, it shows me that this is 12 and a half or almost 13 inches um, in length. And then it's 6.37 in, um, in height. Now, when I measured it right now, from here to about here was nine inches. So I should be perfect because you guys, this is an exact cutout, the circle of your piece. So I should be pretty, dang, I got that pretty darn accurate. And then 13 inches, you have about 14 inches to work with. So this is going to be a great cutout. This is gonna be a great stencil for us to work with. So I am going to go ahead and we are going to cut this out. And if you guys are wondering like where I got these lines from, all I did was come over here to shapes, square, and then um, all I did was go like that. Just made it tiny, changed the color, brought it down here, and then just like made a line with it. 
that's it just so that I can visually see what I wanted to do with my project and where my project was going okay so um this is how I do it again you do your thing okay I just find that when I paint my stripes on like before I used to like cut my decal out first and then I was basically building my paint and my stripes and my image around how big I cut my piece out so now I like to play around with my placement first on my tape and then see how much space I have left to work with so we are going to go ahead and we are going to only cut this Merry Christmas and we are going to paint inside our stencil. So we are going to be weeding out our letters for this one, okay? All right, now that we're done with that, you guys, I was not recording when I was taking this and putting this on, but this is Aura Mask 813 Stencil Vinyl. I usually use just regular 651 Oracle vinyl for stencils like this when I'm doing it directly on sustain, but I'm running out, so I decided to use <laughs> this. Um, but you know what? It works just as good. Um, it's just a little, no, is it as pricey? I'll have to check that. But this is linked also in my Amazon store so you guys can check it out. I usually use Aura Mask 813 when I'm stenciling on top of paint because it doesn't peel away your paint. So that is what I recommend the stencil vinyl for. So right here we are just doing some even coats Make sure, you guys, that it's light coats. You do not need to push down your foam roller. That is how you, you will get bleeds. And then I do a second coat, and we are going to let that dry. And then we are going to weed this girl. Yes. And look, such clean lines from this. And I showed you the Cricut tool, you guys, because I have the Cricut weeder and I have the one from Silhouette. And the Cricut one is my favorite. I've used it since I started. It is so um, pointy, I guess you can say, um, and sharp that all you have to do is get just a little piece of that vinyl up and it is solid. The Silhouette weeding tool is like super dull and you have to gouge out your wood to even get underneath the vinyl. So I highly recommend this toolkit. Um, I will link that down below too. And the scissors too in the toolkit are super sharp, which I love. Okay, so we're gonna finish weeding this off. Super happy with it, had no bleeds. The font was absolutely perfect, in love with it. I knew I wanted this to be more simple because my girlfriend, Jessica, she's not like loud like I am when it comes to things. So I kind of wanted to keep it more traditional, but give it a little bit of flair here and there. All right, look at how cute she is. Yes, girl, you marry, you marry, all right. Okay, now we gotta put our clear on. So you guys, I let the chalk paint dry overnight before I put any of this clear on. And I'm just starting from the bottom because I did not know if the red chalk paint was going to tint my brush at all, which it didn't. So for this sign, I'm only doing one coat because I know that my girlfriend has a um, porch hanger. So it won't be directly in the elements. If I knew it was going directly in the elements, I would put at least two coats on this. Uh, then I am brushing my sides because you do not want those drips to dry because it'll be a cloudy, gross mess. Um, I am using Helmsman um, Spar Urethane in water-based clear satin. That is also linked in my Amazon store. So now that this has dried, ooh, look at how cute she is. Um, I am taking, like I said, my friend is an as crazy as I am. So I just wanted to keep some things traditional and then add a little flair here and there. So these are the holly berries from um, Dollar Tree. And we are going to play around with these and connect them. If you've watched I think the first two wood rounds I did, I like to connect all of my pieces together. Um, so that is what we're going to do. So we're going to create this bow. Like I said, I needed to add a little flair. So this, you guys, if you saw this ribbon in person, it is so stunning. The different glitter in this. Oh, I love it. Okay. So you guys make these, uh, I'm writing down the measurements for you guys. Um, these strips of ribbon cut to 20 inches each. 
And you guys have seen me make this spell a million times now. I'm just hot gluing them. And then we are going to, um, I fold them in half to find their center point. And then we are going to put them together. And then I'm going to zip tie those together. Now you could use hot glue if you wanted to. You could use a needle and thread if you wanted to. Or, I mean, there's so many options. So then I'm like, no, that is way too uneven. Once I fluff it out, I was like, girl, no. Okay, we need to cut that out. So I do cut that off and start over again. <laughs> so this is the finished bow. Okay, let's wipe away that glitter. And here we go. So I am taking our holly and then just kind of playing around with the bow, making sure, yep, she fits. She's good. She's looking beautiful. And then I'm going to take a five inch strip. Is it five? Yeah, five inch strip. And um, sorry, you guys, I do hot glue this into like a tube shape, but I'm not in frame, of course, but I do show you it. Um, so we just hot glue the ends basically together on that five inch strip like so look at see see the tube and then we're going to take another zip tie here I have my holly where I want it I have my bow where I want it now I'm going to attach all of these together okay you see that they're attached now what really made me so mad is at first the left side wasn't as full as the right side so of course I started playing around with it and then the right side wasn't as full as the left side Okay, anyways, I am taking some uh, heavy-duty Velcro. Actually, one of my subscribers and I, dang it, I had her name, and now I lost the paper. Um, we had, she had left a comment and saying that she would like to try it with Velcro, and I was like, you know what, that's actually a pretty good idea, because I usually use heavy-duty magnets for, like, changing out bows and things like that on my wood rounds, but I was like, you know what? Let, let's give that a try. Let's try um, the Velcro. So this is some heavy duty Velcro that I had, I think from Walmart. And I'm cutting it in a thinner strip so that way when it's placed on the wood, you would not see it. And I take like the furry-ish part of the Velcro and I'm gonna attach that to the actual um, greenery here. I do apply a little bit of hot glue just to make sure it stays so when you like take it off. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, um, rip off. Does that make sense? Then I'm going to attach the other side of the Velcro onto there. Now I don't put any hot glue on this cause this is like super crazy sticky. I apply it to the wood sign. Um, you can definitely put some E6000 on there, just like added protection if you're selling the sign. Um, this is going to my friend. So if I have any issues, I will let you guys know. Uh, but I don't think so. Okay, do you see how the right side now doesn't look as full as the left side when it was reversed when I started? Oh, that made me so mad. I've spent, I've spent some, a lot of minutes trying to figure that out, but whatever. It is what it is. It's so beautiful. All right, you guys, that is the wood sign, and she came out so pretty, and if you want to see how we make this reversible, because obviously we didn't drill holes in it this time, then you need to make sure that you have your bell set for all and you're subscribed and you like, because in our next video on Wednesday, we will be making this reversible and I'll be showing you how we do that and what uh, we'll be painting it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know um, some wood round projects that you want to see next or if there's different ho um, holiday signs you wanna see. Let me know. Message me on IG and that's it, you guys. I hope you have a good one. Bye.